What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Thermal Expansion. Now last episode we finished up a relatively large project. It is by no means the biggest project we're going to do in this series. I have some big plans, some based off of great comments that you guys have put in suggesting cool builds to do, um, others that I've been thinking of, you know, in my spare time. But this is the biggest build we've done thus far and I'm super happy with how it turned out. I've been sitting here letting it run a fair bit. So we've got, you know, more than enough fluxed fight to back the system up and start storing it over here. Uh, I have made some small adjustments to the system that we'll go over a little bit later on in this episode. But today we're not going to be doing anything crazy, it's going to be more of a housekeeping episode. If you don't know what that means, we're just going to take care of miscellaneous things around the base, hooking things up, moving some machines, uh, doing a little bit of building, and I know that might not seem like the most exciting thing, so if you're only here for brand new, you know, information on machines, 15 minutes and then you're gone and that's all you want, then I would suggest that, you know, you probably shouldn't watch this episode, you might be a little bit displeased with where it goes, but if you enjoy listening to me talk and do, you know, random things on camera, then feel free to stick around and uh, hopefully you will enjoy it. But there is a lot of stuff that we need to take care of before we can start doing bigger projects, and uh, a lot of that involves moving most of these machines, if not all of them, inside the house, getting them wired up so that this system can actually function because I believe we're gonna start having power issues soon, if not already. Okay, so we are already having power issues. Never mind, this system can't be running right now because we don't even have power. So this is a little bit more urgent than I otherwise would have let on. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a little bit of building. Again, go over some of the changes I've made to that setup. And I think that's gonna be it. So. The first thing that I want to talk about is I have made a diamond axe. I know there was at least one person that was very, very mad that I had yet to make an axe, and I was trying to hold out on making it uh, just because whenever I'm off camera, I'm always watching something when I play Minecraft, so sitting there and just kind of punching wood when I need it isn't a huge deal, and it's very rare on camera that I'm breaking a ton of wood, so I typically just don't see a point in making an axe until I can make uh, you know, the best one, which is eventually going to be one that we can charge up, and we don't need to constantly be remaking. But, when I went on a mining trip, I did a bunch of gathering because we were pretty low on resources, and I go on my mining trips until my picks break, so I went to make a fresh pick, and I was like, you know what, why don't we just make an axe? So, the first thing in business is to just let you know that I now have an axe, I will no longer be standing here punching wood when we're doing building, it'll be a lot faster now. Um, next thing that we need to go over is getting all these machines inside. So I think the best course of action is going to be getting all these machines, or at least I think from here over pretty much, are all machines that just kind of run and don't hook up to anything else. So for example, if we look down here, we have a magma crucible, we've got a fluid transposer, all these aren't really intricate setups. So we can just pop most of these off. And some of these are for our ore processing setup, I can put them back uh, in the house. We'll have to do a little bit of setup on those, but things like this over here, uh, the compactor, that's a machine that just runs on its own. And then uh, the phytogenic insulator, this one's interesting because we don't really need that anymore um, unless we want to make wood or I guess food. We could use it for food now that we have the flux to grow. And that should be most of the stuff that we need. We can grab the leadstone flux ducts so that we can actually wire stuff up. And it looks like our energy storage is inside. So the rest of this is pretty much just the power generation setup, which will be moving most likely behind the base. Um, I don't think I'll do that just yet. I don't even know if I'll do this on camera because it's a little bit of a hassle to kind of move everything and regrow the trees, but we can start moving stuff inside. So I think my plan is to put it on this back wall over here. The chests are not gonna stay there permanently. I think we'll probably put the storage stuff upstairs. Uh, but I don't have a way to get up there yet, which will probably be a staircase coming down over here. So it's not going to be right in front of the door, but it'll be over there in an area we probably won't use. Uh, so I think what I want to do is, I'm trying to think of the ones, like the compactor is one, uh, the fluid transposer needs to go next to the, wait, what? Did I have two of these? What? What? Okay, that makes no sense to me. I don't know why I would have... Oh, wait. Is one of these used in the ore pro... I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I. It's been a long day. I don't know why I have two of those, honestly. 
Uh, so what we're going to do over here is probably put down some cobblestone, which is going to go where wiring would eventually go. And then we'll put down some of these machines. So I think we'll put fluid transposer, magma crucible right next to it and just make sure, yep, it's properly configured. It all it needs to do is output to the right side. And then this one is accepting from the left. So those are ones that kind of need to go near each other, but ones like the energetic infuser, uh, this one can just go right here. It doesn't need to be next to anything. The compactor, depending on what we want to use it for, it can just go there. Obviously, you can have it on storage mode or press mode. Um, I suspect we'll probably end up using it for random things here and there, no automation. So, uh, again, another machine that can kind of just sit on its own. Um, and then we've got all the stuff from our ore processing setup. So, we might need to put that kind of back together over here for the time being. Uh, someone did have an awesome suggestion for a three times ore processing setup, and I actually think it was really cool. So we're gonna be doing that later on in the series, but it requires a very large amount of time and a very large amount of resources. So definitely not something we're gonna do just yet. So we kind of need to set this back up. So I'm trying to remember how we actually did it. Phytogenic insulator was not used. Um, did we use the compactor? I'm trying to think, I don't know why else we would have had that, but I'm pretty sure all we did was igneous extrude and then pulverize into sand and then put that into the induction smelter. I'm pretty sure that's all we did, um, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I think we'll put that right here and do a vertical one then. So if we do igneous extruder, pulverizer, and then induction smelter, I think that should cover everything. Uh, if we look at cobble, we can look at the uses for that just to make sure. I know this is pretty bad because I set this up already, but honestly, uh, it's so weird because so we pulverize the cobble and we're going to need the cache, of course, for the gravel to go into when it's in excess. And then we use the sand in the induction smelter and then we need a side output for the slag. So that's really it. Um, we had rich slag at one point, didn't we? That could be what it was for. So we used sand and then what was I even looking at? Induction smelter. So these produce slag. How do we get rich slag? Because that's what we were getting. I assume that's what has to do with this. So we get rich slag when you process using, where is it? Yeah, when you process any ore using sand, you have a chance of getting rich slag. Okay, so I guess I was just looking at the wrong recipes. So uh, this cache right here is for the rich slag. So that one is going to go right next to the induction smelter down here. So that'll go there and we'll make sure that the yellow output needs to be on this side. It really depends where we want the chest to be. I think we'll put the chest down here. So we'll do an item duct, which are, are they all outside? I thought I grabbed item ducts from out here. Do we not have any item ducts out here? Maybe we don't. I want to see if we have, I feel like I definitely had leftover item ducts from before, but maybe we don't. I definitely want to grab these because we need those. Yeah, I guess we don't. Huh. I guess we used up all of them perfectly for that. One, two, th okay, there's no way. They have to be left over somewhere. Are they in any of these chests? Huh. Guess I'm going crazy. Okay, well, we'll just make some more. I thought we would have had some left over because the recipe would make more than we used there. Uh, just tin and lead, so we can grab that out. Plenty of stuff now. Uh, was it two tin? Yeah, of course. I grab out the wrong order. Uh, plenty of stuff now that I went and gathered a bunch. Pretty easy to do when my roommates insist. Basically, I'll, I'll let you guys in on a little, you know, life story here. So, I'm a big fan of anime, as I'm sure most of you know, because I talk about it pretty frequently on my channel. Not super frequently, but I will discuss it on my channel occasionally. And so I was watching one with my roommates and we had made some agreement, me and one of my other roommates, that I would watch his favorite one if he watched my favorite one. So he loves Clan Ad and I am a big fan of Future Diary or Mirai Nikki, whatever you want to call it. And so we made that agreement and then all of our other roommates, because we live in a suite which has three or two rooms with three people in each connected, um, they were like, oh, we want to join in, we want to join in. And of course... Now we have to watch one of like anime from everyone. So we're stuck watching anime like every night and I'm fine with it. You know, I enjoy anime, but uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely interesting. But uh, yeah, so whenever I'm watching that, I'm in here gathering, doing stuff like that. And it's, it's pretty mind numbing and monotonous, but 
I have my focus elsewhere, so not too bad. So I go on these pretty long mining trips. I think the last one I used an entire iron pick and a full diamond pick, just mining, so interesting. Um, but what we need to do now after my rambling is done and I can actually think, we've got the igneous extruder, which I'm gonna have to go get lava for, which we will get from the magma crucible, but la last time I actually went and got lava and someone was like, no, 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 get it from the magma crucible. The only problem is, oh, never mind. I was going to say we have stuff in the fluid transposer, but that got removed. So we're actually not in a bad spot for that. Uh, we got the igneous extruder and this is going to output out the bottom. And then this is going to take in from the top. This is all weird because it was horizontally uh, organized before. So it is going to do that and it will output out the bottom and then we want the excess output to go out the side. So let's see nothing in that one. I assume there's nothing in the other one too, but we'll put that there. So that is going to take all the gravel. I think that's the side output. We could have another, is that possibly what we use the compactor for? What is, if we use gravel, what are the uses for this? No, so it's just pulverizing it again. I don't really feel like dealing with that because then we have a chance of getting sand back too and would send it back through. So I don't really feel like dealing with that. We'll just take the gravel in here um, and then everything will get output. Uh, this should get output down to the bottom. Sand will go in here and then I think we'll probably just manually insert uh, the ore in here. I don't ever do that on camera. So it's never too much of a hassle. I know you can automatically input it from a chest or something, uh, but for the time being, I feel like it would look a lot nicer if there weren't any chests on the side here or anything like that. So I think I'll just manually input it. And then of course it's going to go out the bottom, the side output out the side, and we're not gonna have any input for the ores. So I think that setup should be good then. We can fill in down here and eventually we'll fill in this whole area with machines. But until then I'll probably just end up, eh. I don't really know what I'll do with that for the time being, but whatever. I'm leaving this area open for just miscellaneous machines that we don't really need to connect to anything. And this is going to bother me if this has outputs on it. Haha, that was a trick someone told me. I know that you can shift click on the sides to remove stuff, um, but if you just completely click on the center one, it removes everything. If you, I think it's shift left click on the center one. Yeah, shift left click on the center one, it clears all the sides which is great because I don't really want sides on those. It kind of annoys me if there are sides showing and you can see it. So uh, this setup should be good, but we need to get some lava for it. So we'll get the water and then I believe we need netherrack to turn into lava. At least that's, I think, what it used to be. Do I have any netherrack here? I do. Uh, let's check out lava. What is the recipe for this? Lava and we get that from either obsidian or netherrack. So looks like one piece should actually be more than enough. And... Let's grab some water, say hello to our little friend over there, and head back inside. I should probably bring the bed in and sleep, but we should be fine for now. The nice part of actually having a house for once in a series is I don't need to deal with things at night. I can just let things be. Okay, so the igneous extruder is up there. Fill that with some water, and then come... It doesn't. Oh, that's so weird, because you could normally pull stuff out of this, so you can't actually open it with the... Oh, it does have power. So you can't actually open it with a bucket. You can open these with a bucket, but you can't open either of these with a bucket. Interesting. Did it transfer it over? Or does that just take... Oh my gosh. That takes so long. Is it even going to be able to finish? I don't think it's going to finish. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, maybe we do need to deal with the nighttime because I think we might need to go outside and get some extra power for this. Yeah, it's not going to be halfway done. Wow. That is actually extremely surprising in my opinion. Okay, well, it's a good thing we have an axe. It's better than a pickaxe. Oh my god. Okay, what a cheap shot. We all saw it. He lagged. Guy has host advantage, obviously. Uh, okay, so we actually have to go over here and grab out the energy cell, which should be in the wall. I guess actually we probably... Oh, it's right there. Oh, do I break the window? I really don't want to break the window. No, that's not, that's a, that's the cache. What am I saying? That's not the energy, energy cell. It's the cache. It's back here. It's got to be back here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's get that. And great. I should really just put a door over here, honestly. You know, we'll fill it in now because we're never going to have to do that again. Because the whole purpose of today is to actually wire this stuff up properly. 
So, not gonna have to deal with that again, but I definitely should have put a door in over here. Sort of like a maintenance hatch or something. But what we can do is grab out our energy cell and come down here. And this has a ton of power in it, so we'll just slap it down. And is there a reason? Of course, that one side. What? There should be power over here, right? Oh, wait, what? I am so not smart. I had every side. I was like, oh, every side is set to output. No, every side was set to input. Okay. Unfortunate. Uh, either way, this should finish off the need to move all those machines in there. So while that's charging, I think we're going to do a little bit of building. And what I want to do, we have to do a little bit of crafting. It's not a lot of building. It was a suggestion, a very small one, uh, but I think it will look really cool. So we'll go inside and do some crafting, but we need basically just spruce staircases. So let's get those. I don't think we need more than like 20 ish. But what we're going to do is add some similar to like not support beams in, but add some support in. Is that supposed to be like that? Yeah, I guess. Uh, add some support in. I want to see how they look like this. Just putting some support in uh, at the corners here to sort of bridge the gap between this level and this level and do it wherever we have these posts. So like this. I want to make sure a creeper's not going to come up behind me and blow up on me too. Um, so let's see how this looks. I know it might look a little bit odd with the shutters. Oh, wow. I had a good call. That I do like how that looks. Uh, there also is the option... Okay, let's 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 take care of this guy real quick. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, okay, and there we go. So we do also have the option of using half slabs next to these if it looks too kind of just too abrupt. You can put a half slab, and it kind of you know puts it. It, it makes it look a little bit not better, just different. Um, but I actually kind of like how this looks. It's a nice addition of color. To this it helps break stuff up a little bit so we can put these in and that one right there should pretty much be the last one we can put them in here if we want but i don't really see a huge purpose to put them in there um yeah maybe it look weird without them let's see how it looks like that it's weird in that corner because you don't really put them on corners like that there's not really a good way to do that is there yeah, there isn't, there isn't a good way to do that, unfortunately. So maybe we won't do anything in that corner. It might look a little bit weird. But I actually like the way it looks. It adds a little bit of uh, a little bit of flair to the building. Um, yeah, so I appreciate that suggestion. Uh, I went through all the comments last night, which is why I'm doing this all now, uh, and responded to everyone since I've been pretty busy up until then. And I always like going through and responding to comments. So this should be enough. Power definitely does not transfer fast, but that should be more than enough if we set it. Wait, what? Oh my gosh, did it stop the whole process? Oh my gosh. Is that output and input? I assume that's output and input. Oh my gosh. That hurts me inside. Oh, that hurts me so. There we go. I guess that's not output and input. What is that then? I have no idea. Whatever. Um, oh gosh. That actually just physically pains me to know that that happened. Okay. Well, regardless, I guess the only real thing left for us to do would be to possibly move this setup over here. The only reason I'm not sure about moving it on camera is mainly because I feel like it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to move. And I want to set it up a little bit differently when I put it over there. Um, so I guess what we'll do is take care of the bed and probably put it in the second floor. And then I want to talk about these real quick. I told you guys that I made a couple adjustments to the setup inside. Um, really nothing inside changed. It was just outside. So last episode, uh, I removed the dirt block under the tree here and it ruined it. You can see on the arboreal extractors when you want to know if they're working properly and my game froze. Okay, there we go. We're back. Uh, if you want to know if it's working properly, you can see this green light on the front. Everything's lit up. At the end of the last episode, they were lit up initially, but then I removed the dirt block below the tree, um, and it was not lit up anymore. So I went, replanted a tree, and now they're working again. And then I put a second one in because there definitely is a backlog if you look inside uh, with the 
need for sap. So you can see here the sap is full because the power is off. Uh, but before I was running uh, with 64 Phytogrow in here, and you can see there's a huge backup in here. So we're so we're short on niter. Um, but even so, there was still niter in here, and we were backed up at the fluid transposer. So that's definitely where the backlog is. I could probably honestly use a third one of these setups uh, once we actually have the power on in there. But I think it'll be fine for what we need. I'm not really in some huge rush to have perfect automation on these and have everything going at you know breakneck speeds. So I did add another one, and I think that should be good. Uh, but other than that, I haven't really changed anything else in the setup. But what we're going to do now is actually probably put the bed down here because I just thought of one other thing that I want to do. So we're not going to add the second floor just yet, mainly also because we do not have a roof on there for the time being. Still have to add that. But what I want to do is add on some covers. Now, there aren't actually covers in here if you search them up, uh, but there is a structural duct which combines with a block to create a cover and it provides structure. So what I assume these do, I've never worked with them, is kind of go around the pipes and then have like a fake block on it um, so that you don't actually have to see them. So what I think we're going to do is probably end up going with, the question is, do we want wood or do we want stone? Wood or stone? Mm, maybe we'll make one and see. We'll make, you know, a couple and see. So it's not expensive. For six of them, it requires two iron nuggets and a lead ingot. So it's basically just a lead ingot and a little bit under one iron ingot too. So we'll make the nuggets and then we'll make the structural duct and then we'll put on uh, spruce wood covers. So we get six from each. Wow. Okay. So we'll do that. And then luckily I recall that we seem to have some stone bricks here. Oh, there we go from that nice little, little area back there. So we'll make some of these then too. And we'll see which one looks better. I'm sure you guys will probably have a different opinion than I do in the comments, but let's throw it on there and see see how they look. So we've got that. Um, what I think you know kind of is the merit to this one is it's a little bit different than the floor and the ceiling, which it might seem odd, but I actually think it looks a little bit nicer because I'm pretty sure when we add the spruce wood, it's just gonna look weird with the floor, that and the ceiling all being the same color. Um, and it also matches the walls, which of course is what this technically should be uh, if we're trying to make it look like it's actually a wall. Uh, so I do like that one. It also matches the machines, but of course I'm not, can we, oh no, it breaks the pipe too. Can we manually break these? Or not manually, but can we non-wrench break these? Oh, is there a way to get these off? Please, please be a way to get these off. Please, game. Oh, don't do this to me. Okay, stone brick covers it is. I'm kidding. We're going to check. We'll check one with the spruce cover. Oh, I actually like the way that looks. Oh my gosh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I like the way that looks. Now, you know, we're going with the stone. Let me know. You guys have a little visual of that. Clearly, it's going to be a pain in the butt. There, there has to be a way, please. Someone tell me the way to get these off without removing the pipes, too. There has to be. Wait, wait. I figured it out. Solved it. Solved it. Solved it. I'm so smart. Never mind. Okay, let's. That was just a fake clip right there. Let's check what they look like with all these on there. Nah. Eh. And I don't know about that one. I mean, I'm letting you guys see mainly because I care what you guys think on this subject, but. I don't know about that. I kind of like the stone ones better. So I think that's what we're going to put in for now. And we'll leave it like that, which I think is cool. It looks like this is a, a full wall now. You know, it looks like uh, there's not a ton of wiring behind it, which of course there, there is a ton of wiring behind it. Um, do we have lava yet? Oh, I was, I was about to freak out. All the lava's over here. Okay. So we want to grab that out, put it in there. And then we just want to verify that this actually works. So it'll come down here, and then this will make sand, and then it'll go in here, and then if I wanted to, I could throw some cobble in there, and it would cook down, and then kick out into the chest below here. So this one should properly properly function. There we go. We'll let it run. We're going to get some nice stone bricks from this. It's basically what we have going on over here, too. I wonder if we'll get slag from this one. Wow, we're so lucky. And then, of course, the stone brick gets kicked out down there. Nope, don't want that actually running again, but I'll fill that up with some of my sand, and it looks like this system is functioning properly. So, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, didn't get through everything I planned on doing, 
not really for lack of time, but I think this would be a really, for lack of a better way to say it, just a super annoying thing to move on camera, honestly. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of stuff to move and set up properly again, and I want to keep most of it underground. I really only want to see the tree and the arboreal extractor, so all of this stuff is going to be moved behind the house over here. I cleared out the area, and it's going to go underground, and I think we're going to set up two of those. So, uh, probably not going to do that on camera, but I will show you guys at the start of next episode these, uh, and then we should be able to start on some new projects. So, if there's anything specific that you guys want to see, feel free to let me know in the comments. Your suggestions have been great so far, whether it's how to improve buildings, how to improve, you know, any of the setups that we've made, all just all amazing things. So, I want to say thank you guys for making my life a little bit easier when it comes to planning from episode to episode. Um, and I also want to say thank you for what has to be one of my most highly upvoted comments on a video, uh, you know, and pretty much forever, which was someone said that, you know, just take real life seriously. Don't worry so much about YouTube and putting out videos and everything and rushing them and, and making my life hectic to, to try and keep up with YouTube and with school. And, you know, everyone seemed to kind of echo their sentiments, um, saying that, yeah, it, it's perfectly fine to take time to do real life stuff and that you guys don't expect me to constantly be putting out videos. And I do appreciate that. Uh, obviously, you know, I understand it, but still I always do feel guilty regardless of what you guys say just because uh, I personally like recording videos and uploading them, so I do feel guilty when I don't do it, but um, I do appreciate you guys saying that and, you know, understanding that it can get a little bit busy sometimes uh, and there's not a ton that I can do about that. But, again, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching the housekeeping episode, uh, as it is, and I will talk to you guys later.